Happy Thursday. I hope everyone out there is having a great week. It has been super exciting to see as the world is slowly opening back up, more and more sports are getting back into action. It's just the excitement that the sports world brings to so many people. I think that's pretty incredible. Um, And when I was thinking about that this week, as I'm seeing more and more people out practicing and games kind of kicking off, um, it just makes me wonder, as a former college athlete and now as a spectator of the sport, If I am this excited as a fan that sports are starting back, I can only imagine the mixture of emotions that athletes, especially current athletes, have been feeling since this pandemic and being away from their sport, but now gradually kind of getting back into the swing of things. Um, This has probably been the first time in forever that current athletes have been away from their sport, from their teammates, from their families. And if you have now considered a a former athlete, you know what it feels like to be away from the game. Um, So no matter where you stand in that, I think as an athlete or someone who is closely involved in sports, there are some mental hurdles that you face when you're no longer connected to that team or athletic community. Um, When you're having to learn how to live a life beyond your sport, there are some things and challenges that you face that you're not even prepared for, that you never even knew existed. Uh, So that's why I remember really being as a former college athlete at Wake Forest University, um, all I thought about was my sport. But what about life after sports? What's next? Are you prepared? Are you connected? Are you mentally fit to withstand the reality of no longer being a part of that team or being on the locker room or being considered an all-star? Let's say your identity was attached to some way in that community. Are you prepared to face some of the challenges that come along with Uh, no longer being in the athletic community. And that's really why I'm excited about today's show, because I've teamed up with Players Beyond the Game. They're a nonprofit organization founded by a visionary and a forward thinker, uh, Jontonio Pinckney. Players Beyond the Game has a mission to further the conversation and raise awareness and facilitate access to tangible resources to support the mental health and well-being of former collegiate athletes. And today we're going to kick off what's called the Shine Bright Athlete Series. Okay, this will be a monthly series happening every third Thursday of the month. We're going to have guests on our show each time we meet. Um, They're going to be connected to the athletic world in one way or another. They're leaders in their field. They're going to be here sharing their knowledge, their resources, and their expertise with us. We're just excited to create an opportunity Um, to have conversations and discussions that support athletes in every area of their life. We want to make sure they have resources. We want to make sure they have information. We want to make sure they have networks necessary to be successful in life during and beyond sports. Um, And joining me today as my co-host, she is the Director of Communications for Players Beyond the Game. I have the amazing Miss Erica Singleton on the show this morning. Good morning, Erica. How are you? Good morning, I'm great. How are you? I am doing amazing. It's so nice to see you. You are looking beautiful. Are you excited about our Shine Bright for Athlete series? So excited. Um, Gentonio and I actually went to Winthrop University together, and Professional Beyond the Game was kind of birthed through our relationship as athletes at college um, and our different experiences. You know, our biggest thing with Professional Beyond the Game is to prepare athletes for those transitions that they might not have thought much about on their own. Uh, When you are so focused, when you are so driven, and so many athletes are towards um, their goals within their sport, um, and so many people are coaching you and mentoring you in that sport, uh, life beyond sports sometimes falls to the wayside. Um, And the reality that the sporting days will end is not always addressed as early as it should be. Um, My own transition started, uh, my first transition really was from high school to college, um, understanding that my basketball career had ended and I wasn't going to be playing basketball in college. And depending upon what time you've met me in life, you might not even know I ever played basketball. I competed in college in track and field. I was a thrower, Uh, shot put, discus, the javelin and the hammer. And that's where most people think that, that my original love lies. But um, I had help with my transition. Uh, I had help and encouragement. And so that's what we want to provide is a network to help and encourage all of the things beyond sports, a community 
financial responsibility, social activism, mental health, um, just health, personal health and well-being, all of that. Yes, 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 yes. Everything you just said, I'm just got chill bumps as, as you're saying that because it's super important. And you're right. There's a lot of times we don't even know that you don't know. Um, and so what we're going to do this morning, because we do have an amazing guest on our show, cannot wait to introduce her. And what, before I introduce her, I want to introduce people. If you are new to this show, you are listening to the Mental Fitness Matters show. This show is designed to provide you with education, tips, strategies and solutions to improve your overall mental health and mental fitness. You can always go and download the Mental Fitness Matters podcast um, to whatever uh, podcasting platform you listen to. Feel free to download and subscribe. And we're going to go ahead and hop into the show today. I cannot wait to introduce uh, Miss Deanna Ferranti. She has an incredible background. Um, she is the chief operating officer of the Athlete Network, the largest network of current and former athletes. After 15 years in software, Deanna joined the Athlete Network to combine her passion for sports with the ability to use technology to impact the masses. That's powerful. Um, she played basketball at Cornell College and previously co-hosted a NASCAR radio show for 610 Sports. She's a 20-year participant in the Kansas City Corporate Challenge Games with some medals and a torn Achilles to show for it. Deanna, you are a beast. Welcome to the show this morning. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great, Tracy. Thanks so much for having me. I just could not be more excited to be part of this important conversation. Oh, we are super, super excited to have you. Tell us a little bit about the Athlete Network and your role. You have such an incredible background. Oh, well, you know, Athlete Network was founded by former college athletes. So I'm back home in the middle of athletics. And it's to help athletes keep competing on and off the field, much as Erica just spoke to you. And the goal was to create a worldwide engagement platform where athletes can find each other and find those valuable resources they need to be successful. And when they get to Athlete Network, athletes are able to search for jobs with employers who value hiring athletes and those specific traits that they possess. They can connect with their school during and after their playing days to get access to information, programs, services, updates that help them win in sport and in life. And most importantly, I think they can grow and make meaningful connections with other athletes through every phase of their journey and find somebody who looks and sounds and feels like them. That is so huge. And I think as we all are kind of uh, mimicking the same thing, how important is it to be connected after our sport? Mm -hmm. I remember just playing ball and not even thinking about, okay, what am I doing after this? So mm -hmm. how important has it been to kind of have and be a part of a network like this, providing these connections, providing these resources to athletes who don't even recognize that they may need something like this? Absolutely. I mean, when I think about it, every image we see of athletes is like celebrating at the championship game, right? right? Which is great, but there's so much more to the journey. There's the losses and the missed opportunities and the injuries and all the other things that come with it. And athletes can experience isolation. They can feel disconnected just like everybody else on that journey. Um, and certainly as they go through those transitions. So it's just so important that they have a way to connect with others who understand that experience, who've been through those things that they've been through, and they can support them through those ups and downs. It could be, you know, reconnecting with an old teammate and reliving the glory days, the great times, but it can also be with connecting with other athletes from your school that did a different sport or were there in a different time period and who can just relate, who can have a light conversation with them. Um, and, it, you know, it could be two athletes that didn't even, you didn't even go to school with them, but maybe they live in your city and they're just up for a pickup game. Those connections are just so critical and it's hard to make those outside of the team you were a part of. So creating a place and a platform for people to be able to do that just is critical, especially in this time with everything else going on. And those connections then help root us in that identity of being an athlete. Whether we've got two more years of eligibility or haven't worn the colors in decades, we still carry that identity with us everywhere we go. And finding other people who also have it is such a meaningful connection. How powerful is that? You're right. That identity never leaves us, right? Once an athlete, always an athlete. And there's a certain type of mentality that athletes have. I don't know what that is, but there's a certain type of mindset and mentality that athletes have. Uh, speak a little bit more about that platform. So are you saying when people kind of get on this network, they can literally... Uh, search through a, a platform and identify with people that went to their school or played on their team or maybe connect with former athletes and really reunite in that way? 
Yeah, absolutely. So there's um, a lot of different connection points. As you come onto Athlete Network, you provide a little bit of information about yourself that can be used to help you find other people. So think school, where you live, that city location, um, when you graduated, a lot of those components about a person can help create a natural team for you in different areas. So again, it might be people my age or people in my city or people who played my sport who live all over the place. And those connections then based on those you know, attributes about me and about an other person, um, just create that initial conversation. It's easy to call somebody if I know what we have in common or to reach out and make that connection if I know we already have something to talk about when I do. That is awesome. That's powerful. Erica, um, you guys, Players Beyond the Game and the Athlete Network are teaming up to do some pretty incredible work together, right? I would love yeah. for you guys to kind of talk us through what's on the horizon for, for the partnership here. Sure. Uh, part of the biggest thing for us and what she said is finding that community again. When you're no longer a part of the team, even though you, in many ways, are part of that team for life, um, you will have teammates that you do continue to stay connected to. But especially when you first leave the campus of wherever that you were part of a sport, um, there is that feeling of disconnection. You no longer are, you no longer fit into that world anymore. And you may not be prepared to fit into the one that you're supposed to move into. Um, so part of our partnership is really being able to have those type of, not only using um, and, and helping through their network to facilitate some of those connections, but really identify the people out there who can help them with the things that they don't even know to ask about. You know, um, I, both Gentonio and I have worked in talent development and talent acquisition and finding out that people who hire in different industries don't really understand um, the usefulness of bringing in an athlete. You know, in interviews, they'll look at their resumes and there's not a lot, especially for revenue generating sports there's not a lot of extracurriculars. Um, so they'll say things like, oh, so you just played football. Um, well, let's be honest, you know, you look at an Eagle Scout and you understand the type of leadership and drive that got someone to the point at which that they got the, the title of Eagle Scout, yes. um, but you don't look at the management um, capabilities and the leadership qualities of someone who was a football quarterback um, in college. And so really sitting down and letting them understand the skills that they bring to the table so that they can articulate something like that, being able to say, well, yeah, I played on Saturdays, but let me talk to you about the time management that went into it, about the leadership, about the mood development. You know, a lot of athletes are mood makers. Yes. They create the energy in the room and a lot of companies need that, um, but they don't know how to get that or even understand that. Because a lot of people who didn't participate in athletics don't really understand how that translates. They're soft skills. They're right. intangible. And so part of our partnership is to help them find people who have not only been athletes, but in places um, in different industries, the industries that they want to move into, who can help them make those transitions, who can facilitate conversations to help them as well. That's powerful. That's powerful. And that's necessary. And I love how you're you guys are talking about linking all of the necessary components uh, to not only make a, a good team, but to build better businesses and to lead companies and to put skill sets in place to be the future, which is so powerful. And I think as a as a former athlete, being a part of something like that, and when you think about now switching the identity, right, and, and kind of entering the world into a new phase of your life, having connections to something similar or something like that brings you right back around to that same feeling of being on that team, being in that sport, being in that moment, you know, and a lot of times what I've seen statistically is when people are removed or they're in a, a transition to a non-athlete, the depression rate rises, Right. The depression rate rises because people no longer know now what is my purpose? Who am I? You know, and to and what is my my role now? So to be a part of a network and community and organization that you can have these connections and have these links. That's incredible. What have you guys seen in terms of 
um, the benefits so far from the athletes coming through the athlete network? What has been some of the comments back, you know, the, the appreciation of being part of something like that? What have people said? Deanna, did you want to address that one? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's, um, it's interesting because when you talk about an athlete, you tend to think about their sport first mm -hmm. or their skills on the field or on the court or on the pitch. And what I really love about what um, Professionals Beyond the Game is doing is they're looking holistically at the athlete. They're thinking about every component of them as a person. And what that really does is expands the way people think about what's next, the way they think about those transitions. Because I'm thinking about my physical well-being as an athlete, but physical well-being after being an athlete is almost as hard, if not harder, because that support and that structure goes away. So how many of us quit playing in college and gained a few pounds right. or got out of shape or <laughs> didn't you know, invest as much into ourselves? And so starting to plant those seeds and water them along the way so that people understand there's life beyond that competitive you know, arena is really, really important. And thinking about myself as more than just an athlete. I know that really drives a lot of our identities, but there's so much more that we can be doing to support them, to create habits, to create practices, to provide those services um, when people do struggle or when things are going great so that they understand that those other components are, are part of their core and part of what they'll take with them after those competitive days are finished. That's huge. We're really working with them um, with the idea of going from being players to professionals. And um, we, we've had a, a number of different conversations and really some interactions recently. Um, we started out really just wanting to work in a broad focus and then professionals beyond the game really started looking at the disparity in um, doctors, uh, minorities in the medical field. Um, and so that's one of our other focuses and where we've really pushed and this is where we've gotten the majority of our feedback from is um, looking at athletes who wanted to go into the medical field, but really were ill prepared to take those steps. Uh, we've been been connecting them with uh, medical schools and programs, um, some of them that even start from the high school level, because in the world that we're in right now, some of those high school athletes may not get a chance to play college sports. And that's a hard conversation to have with someone who's been working on something and working towards a goal uh, since a lot of times, six years old, sixth grade, uh, six weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, it really didn't matter, but they, everybody tells you to, to build a path, create a goal, work towards that goal. It's exactly what they've done. And so much of what's happening is out of their hands. For us, it's, it's a way of tapping into um, their creativity, their strengths uh, that may not have been fostered as much and really opening their eyes to programs um, and introduction into systems that they may not have uh, understood. And so the feedback that we've gotten is you know, being able to say to someone, I knew what I wanted to do when I left high school. I knew what field I was going to go into. Um, and then that field changed. And for me, it was figuring out what the next step was after that. So to talk to them about some of our own um, journeys and transitions, and then getting them to say, I, I thought I was alone. And you get so much of that. You're, yes. you're surrounded by a community of fans, a community of supporters, of coaches, of teammates, and still a lot of athletes feel completely alone. Um, and so that is what we're getting is when um, they have that confirmation, one, that they're not alone, and two, that there is a way to proceed forward. You guys are doing something extremely incredible here. And there's a lot of little nuggets that I heard you both saying and talking about the whole person taking care of the entire person. There's so many parts of our lives where we are just focused in one area because that's our job, but there's so much more to who we are. And so what you guys are doing are, is putting together systems and a platform and a network to make people feel good from the inside out. So talk about that. When people are feeling their best, 
players and beyond, right? Players to professionals. You're going to get more from that person because the better you feel, the better you perform. And you guys are creating opportunities for people to do just that. That's such an awesome, awesome thing. So glad to have you both right now and having this conversation. Um, Tell us, when is a good time? So if there's an athlete listening to this, an athletic department, a university, anybody in the sports world listening to this right now, when is a good time to connect to a network like this? When is the time to say, you know, what I want to be a part of the action let's go I think you know what we found is um, as people are you know headed into sport uh, an organized sport like in high school or college is that community is really defined and structured for you you're part of a team you're assigned to a group of people with a common goal you've set rules and expectations you know the schedule um, that's a very defined community And so if people join during that time where they've got that support, it gives them a chance to continue to grow that. That network becomes critical then as you transition, um, you know, away from having that defined community and have to start to create your own. Networking and building community outside of your team is hard. It takes effort and research and there's risk involved as you reach out to people who may or may not be responsive and, and it can be uncomfortable at times. And so Learning how to be in a community before you have to go find and create your own community, I think, is critical. And for a lot of people, those transitions start to happen in that high school, college age time period where you start to think about, okay, what's the next team I'm going to be a part of? And for many people after college, it's going to be life. Uh, Most of us don't have professional sport careers. And so we're going to join a new team, but it's going to be less defined with less clarity and less structure. And we're going to have to really invest that energy and effort into, um, you know, thinking about who to surround ourselves with, what our new goals are, understanding how we fit into that team. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, We work with a group uh, specifically of high school age students Um, within the athlete network. A lot of those people are connecting through college experiences and through college athletic departments and things like that. Um, But I would absolutely encourage the high school level. Like I said, uh, more often than not, that is the first transition. Uh, So many of them have gotten used to uh, the schedules, uh, the planning, Uh, Even that transition from high school to college, if you are going to go into it, so many people have outlined your life for you. They've told you where you need to be, what time you need to be there, how much time you need to give to this. Um, And college is a new experience because those systems aren't there anymore. A lot of that is you. And you're so used to the language that you lived in, not just in sports, but in life in general, learning that new language, learning that new experience um, is so different. And having a safety net to help prepare you for that is important. And the same is true from college um, to whatever career path you take. You know, the language in the huddle and in the locker room is very different than the language at a networking event. Um, and, And really being prepared for that. And it is, you know, even for people who have been on the largest stage and had to perform in front of the biggest crowds, um, it is a step outside of their comfort zone. Yes. Um, but I would also go as far to say is that the community around them is important too. Athletes always give back to their communities um, and professional athletes, especially. And so healthcare is important because that gives back to the community, mm-hmm. um, but also helping them when they don't know how to help the community is important. Good, good, good. And that's important because I I always say everyone needs a coach, right? Everyone needs somebody in an area that you're not so well versed or equipped in to kind of have support along that way is is incredible. And you guys are doing that. We have about two minutes left and I want to make sure people know how to reach uh, players beyond the game and the athlete network. So if you guys could both just give out your your information there so people know how to follow up and reach you. Yeah, uh, we are pbtg.com. O-R-G, uh, professionalbeyondthegame.org. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Instagram. We have um, a newsletter and we will, we also uh, share little interviews and stuff on our Athletes Network um, page as well. Um, Thank you. Just all sorts of resources there and resource cards to help people find what it is that they may need right now. You, Deanna, what you got? Yeah, we'd love to have you join us at athletenetwork.com. Uh, you can come create a profile. It's super quick, just a minute of your time and join in the conversation in the community that we've created there. 
Um, and you can also reach me directly. My email is Deanna at athletenetwork.com. I'd love to hear from anybody who's curious about what we're doing or wants to connect with other athletes. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate your time. I want my community to shine bright like the stars that you are. We will see you next week. Have a great week. It matters.